I'm making 10 pieces of handmade miniature Christmas decor to decorate a dollhouse fireplace. I made over this miniature fireplace to use as the backdrop for my Christmas decor. I replaced the outdated wooden rails at the bottom of the fireplace with miniature cork bricks. I'll post a full video of the fireplace makeover, but for now I'm using these finials as rustic decor for the mantle. I used a heat gun to take the pieces apart. I want one of them to be shorter and the other longer, so I cut the bottom off of one of the pegs. For the taller one, I'm covering the bottom of the peg using a plastic pony bead. I prepped the plastic for paint and used a cheap file to make the inside diameter of the bead bigger. This is a tight fit, so I didn't even add glue. To add a little height to the second finial, I'm digging into my stash of wooden beads. I'm drilling a hole in the top of each of these pieces, so I'm starting by poking a little hole with a tack. This divot makes it a lot easier to use my pin vise to drill a hole. I switched from the smaller drill bit to a larger drill bit. I needed to drill a hole big enough to receive the end of a toothpick. These bamboo toothpicks are actually thinner than standard toothpicks. I unified the different materials by mixing up a custom brown color. For more classic Christmas decor, you could paint these silver or add gold leaf. I even considered transforming these into rustic snowmen, but I have a lot of crafts to show you, so I don't want to spend too much time on this one. To make them look more rustic, I sanded off a bit of the paint to reveal some of the wood underneath. When it comes to Christmas decor, I really love Christmas villages. To transform these Monopoly houses, I'm starting out by cutting off the chimney. The little round chimney on the top of each house is a dead giveaway that screams Monopoly House, and I want to disguise the origin. I performed the chop using my X-Acto saw, and now I'm filing them flat. These long windows on the side are also pretty distinctive, so I'm filing those away as well. The steps I do later probably made this step unnecessary, but I don't really plan ahead, and I just make it up as I go along. To add some texture to the super smooth surface and make this more agreeable to being painted, I decided to do some paper mache with paper towel. The paper towel ended up being too difficult to work with, so I switched to toilet paper. Fortunately, I buy very cheap toilet paper, so it was perfect for this. To make life easier, I fashioned a householder using some museum wax on the end of a paintbrush. The paper mache process is super easy. I added some white glue, spread it around, and used my wet paintbrush to pick up pieces of toilet paper. At first, I'm just focusing on adding the toilet paper, and then I'll flatten it out afterward. When I'm flattening the toilet paper, I like to dip my brush in some watered-down white glue to make the process go a little faster and make the toilet paper lay flatter. To make them dry quickly, I only did a couple layers of thin toilet paper and used my hair dryer. They still had a teeny bit of moisture in them from the glue, but the next step involves adding moisture anyway, so I just plowed ahead. I wanted to balance the wood on the other side of the mantle in the two finials, so I decided to paint these like wood and do a light dry brushing over top to highlight the texture. I've had great success in the past using spackula snow, so I'm adding some faux snow to the roof. To spread the spackle around, I'm wetting my fingertip. The spackle wasn't too keen on cooperating, but I did attempt to make some icicles around the roof using a wet paintbrush. It was only after I created my wispy white icicles I realized I really don't like the brown. I repainted both of the houses so they look like gingerbread instead, and I like this idea a lot more. While the gingerbread colored paint dries, I'm painting the roof and the icicles using some white paint. Spackle looks white once it dries, but once you paint it white, you realize it's not quite white. It's really subtle, but I did create the look of baked gingerbread by adding some shaved chalk pastel around the edges. To really sell these as gingerbread houses, I'm adding some white details. I googled reference images to get some ideas for gingerbread house designs, but since I'm working on such a tiny surface, I ended up having to keep it very simple. I added a mixture of door shapes, window shapes, and dots. I also tried to use a gel pen, but the gel would not write on the paint at all, so I had to stick with my thin white paint and tiny brush. Once I had built up my confidence a bit, I tried to paint some lace on this side of the house. I think it looks more like a wonky fence, so I'll angle this side toward the back of the mantle where you can't really see it. 
In a future video, I need to make a more classic gingerbread house with teeny tiny candy. To get the proper sizing for my next bit of decor, I added some wax paper to the top of the mantle. I folded the wax paper in the middle to get the center point. I added the gingerbread houses and the two rustic finials to the top to sketch out a rough design. I'm making a centerpiece and I want to make sure it's not too big. I'm using lycopodium moss to decorate the center of the mantle. The moss is naturally a very dark color, so I'm using a lighter green I painted with acrylic paint in a previous video. This type of moss naturally looks like evergreen branches, so it's perfect for this type of thing. I'm using some hot glue to tack the pieces together and using the pattern I drew as a guide for size and shape. To keep the shape balanced and symmetrical, I'm creating both sides at the same time, rather than doing the left side and then jumping to the right side and trying to remember what I did. With the base pieces established, I'm adding some smaller pieces using wood glue. I used the hot glue so the first few pieces would hold quickly and switched to the wood glue so there is invisible glue on the top. I added some spackle branches from my faux tree project and some more snow using white paint mixed with glue. As a finishing touch, I added some glittery styrofoam balls from the Dollar Tree. You could use similar techniques to make a miniature wreath or a centerpiece for a table. I'll show you how I made this faux mercury glass in the fireplace makeover video, but for now I'm making some decor to hang on the mirror. I want to make a bunch of the shiny red faux berries you see every Christmas season, so I'm mixing red India ink into faux snow from the Dollar Tree. I drew two circles on some wax paper to give myself a guideline for creating a wreath. My styrofoam balls are more pink than red, so I'm using some red paint mixed with white glue to make them darker. The India ink made the styrofoam balls stick together when they dried, so I'm breaking them apart with my fingers. Since the ink didn't dye them enough anyway and made them stick together, I would definitely skip the step of dyeing the balls. Using my circles as a guide, I'm adding the styrofoam balls mixed with paint and glue to the wax paper. This went pretty well at first, but as the glue and paint mixture dried, the balls became harder to handle. I wrestled them into position and used watered down glue to hold them together. This step helped me develop a much faster and easier technique. For the second wreath, I added more red paint so the color would be richer and added the styrofoam balls to the surface of the wax paper in a really haphazard manner. With the material in place, I added some watered down white glue to add moisture and make it easy to push the pieces around. I used a combination of a paintbrush and a toothpick. Once I got the wreath and the shape I liked, I used a brush to clean up some of the watered down glue around the edges. With the new technique, it only took two minutes to make the second wreath. I allowed each of them to dry overnight. You can see this one that had less paint in the glue mixture isn't quite as bright red as the one on the right. To give my anemic wreath a bit more color, I painted it with brilliant red. I sealed both of them with a gloss Mod Podge. I'm using a stippling motion to get the Mod Podge in between the berries. The Mod Podge was pretty white and thick in some places and it actually ended up drying that way, so make sure you apply a nice even layer. Long before I let my wreaths dry, I used some of the extra berries to make more decor. I scooped the styrofoam balls onto some more wax paper and used a toothpick to push them into clusters of three berries. My hope was that these would dry this way and I could add them easily to holly leaves in the future. It worked a real treat, so I added them to a tiny jar for storage. I like to store really small things in these cheap glass jars you can find at the Dollar Tree. To make some tiny holly leaves, I'm using some of this leftover painted paper from my miniature plants video. I painted each side of the paper a darker green color and sealed it with a gloss Mod Podge. I'm using the edge of a razor blade to get a nice clean fold line. This was really hard to capture on camera, but I used a hole punch and punched three holes to make a holly leaf shape. This technique was really hit or miss, so I switched to scissors to cut out the shapes. The folded line creates the center leaf of the vein and makes the leaves symmetrical. To make a holly leaf bit of decor, I added a glob of white glue to some wax paper so it's easy to remove later. If anyone's aware of a holly leaf paper punch, let me know because I'd love to make a lot more of these. 
These are the super skinny bamboo toothpicks I used earlier in the video. These are some plastic bead caps I got from Timu. I'm using two of the bead caps plus the skinny toothpick to make miniature candles. I'm securing the bottom bead by filling it with hot glue and sticking it to my tile surface to dry. I'm adjusting the toothpick so it's straight up and down before the glue cures. The gold is a bit too bright for me, even for Christmas. I'm dulling the shine a bit by adding some brown paint mixed with rubbing alcohol. If you're making silver more muted, you could mix black into your paint instead of brown. I want the toothpicks to look a lot more like candles, so I'm adding some wax. The only white wax I had was this candle that was well past at the end of its life. It's a lot easier to do this technique if you can light your candle and drip the wax from the lit candle onto the toothpick. Instead, I scooped some of my wax onto the candle to melt it. Using a jar candle didn't work very well, so I switched to a lighter to have more control over melting and dripping the wax. You could paint the very end of the candle black to make it look like a wick, but I decided to use a thread instead. First, I stiffened the piece of thread using some glue and used some more glue to add it to the tip of the candles. To go above the mirror, I made a simple garland by tacking together four pieces of lycopodium moss with hot glue. Think of how cute this would be on miniature stair railings. When I sat down to craft these Christmas minis, I didn't really have any ideas. I went on Google and Pinterest to get ideas from full-size Christmas decor. I normally don't come up with any ideas until I actually start making things. Half of my posts on Patreon are available to everyone, so please join as a free member or as a paying member for $3 a month. You can check out this video next to see the miniatures I made for Bentley House Minis.